Thank you all for joining us today. I am Sanket Chane, Product Manager at LucidWorks, and I am thrilled to have Dimitri Liner, Front End Manager at LucidWorks, here today with me. Today, we will show you how embeds reduce website search integration time from weeks to just minutes. We will share some real world use cases with you and also show you a live demo. See why our customers love it and call it unbelievably fast and easy, saving thousands of dollars in implementation costs. Connected Search is an AI powered website search engine, which makes website search effortless and affordable for business users such as marketing managers by providing best in class search results, rapid integration paths, business centric relevancy controls and actionable insights. Keeping the business users such as marketing managers in mind, we have simplified the process of getting website search up and running down to three very simple steps. First, you add data sources to your search app. Next, you add just the relevancy if needed. And third, you add website search onto your website. Step one is creating the data sources to get started with any search uh, project. You will have to add some website data into your search tool and make it searchable. So connected search gives you a very business friendly UI with guided workflows and that is very easy to use. Step one, you can add a sitemap or a URL so that you can go and add some data to your application. Next, add some custom labels to use for filtering at query time. You can assign one or more labels. For example, if you're crawling post sitemap.xml, you can add blogs as your specific label or you can add website data as your label, etc. Next, you can also select specific types of files that you want indexed in your search system while it, uh, while the crawler is discovering your website. You can select slides, PDFs, spreadsheets, one or any combination of the above. Next, you can also add some inclusion and exclusion links to control the crawler where it goes and what it crawls. You can add some include links. So you can add some subdirectories in this section so that the crawler will go and only crawl those specific subdirectories from your website. Exclusion link works in the opposite way. You can exclude certain paths or subdirectories from the crawl so that the website will not, the crawler will not enter those specific sections of your website and ignore those web pages as it discovers them. Next, you can add a scroll schedule so you can add hourly, daily, or weekly, or a monthly schedule, specific time, and you can select the frequency of the crawl. And that's it, you can save, and you can also actually run your data source out of schedule. So for example, if your content is updated for some reason out of schedule, like let's say, instead of running on every Monday morning, something happens on a Thursday, your website is updated, you can come back to the tool, just click save and run, and it will actually just run an ad hoc crawl for you. Second step is adjusting the relevancy if needed. So connected search allows the business users to manually tune the search results if need be, depending on the business specific use cases. For a given search term, users can boost documents to promote them to the top of the search results. So they are featured documents or you can highlight them in your search results for uh, to grab attention from your users. Then you can also block documents for specific search queries. So whenever somebody searches for, let's say, RNA, specific documents do not appear. Additionally, we also provide a global block option that blocks the document from appearing anywhere in the system. Is It, it functions in a way that it, it is as good as the document was never indexed in the search system. It doesn't delete the document, but will completely block it from appearing anywhere in the search results. Finally, the time for integration comes, right? Any search project is not complete until it is live on your website. So a main pain, a pain point reported by our business users is that it takes a long time to implement a search solution on a website. And it often takes engineering resources to do so, which we typically don't have on our teams. Now, to solve this problem, we introduce the concept of embed components which are copy paste code snippets that you can add to your website and immediately get the benefit of search on the website right away. Now, this integration methodology is geared towards 
users who need rapid integration and want to quickly see value out of the product. And it takes down your integration time from weeks to minutes. Let's dive more into the embeds. Dima is going to show you some cool demos and how integration works with embeds. Thanks, Sankit. And hey, everyone, I'm Dima, and I'm the front-end engineering manager here at Lucidworks. And today, I want to walk you through adding search into your web apps using Springboard embeds. So before we dive in, I want to touch base on a few key principles. Much like the rest of Springboard, embeds are continuously integrated and continuously delivered. This means low code and low maintenance for you. So as we add additional functionality or patch newly discovered world vulnerabilities, the updates will be delivered in real time without you having to know or care. And secondly, embeds are compiled down to native web components, which really just means they work everywhere that the web works. They're not a concoction of a higher level framework. They'll work side by side and inside of your existing ecosystem, be it WordPress, HTML, React, and so forth. All right. So let's talk about integration. Integration is a quick multi-step process. First, grab the script tag that's available for you in the Springboard Council and throw it into your website. This gives you access to search components and API functions. And so to use search components, you can use them discreetly by adding, say, the search ahead. And if that's all you need, that's great. A lot of customers just want to search ahead in their header. Or you could add additional search components simply by including them with their tags and they'll be added and work cohesively. They understand each other and there's no further configuration required for them to work out of the box. All right, and say you have your own UI and you don't wanna use the search components, that's cool. You can get access to the API functions through the search store along with, you know, when you add the script tag, you get access to a function that returns you a search store, which is a service that contains all the API functions. This way you don't have to write your own backend or any authentication code. All right, and I'll leave you all with a quick reference to the docs and a few examples. And with that, let's dive into the demo. So for this demo, I am going to use CodePen to help capture as much of the real-time aspect as I can. We're gonna start with a blank site as we have here, a blank HTML file with some bare minimal uh, styling, and we are going to build out search components in our site. So let's get going. Uh, up first, as I've said uh, a few times, not too many, we uh, paste the script tag in, and this this is the this is the magic, or at least it contains all the magic. All right, and now that we did that, we're ready to rock and roll. Let's add our first component to our site here. So our first component is the search ahead component. There we go. Uh, we just added it. We see it popped in live and let's just make sure it works. Okay, it works. Look at that. Uh, in this case, it's hitting it's hitting our Springboard application where I've ingested a lucidworks.com data. So we're seeing blogs, videos, uh, and site content here. All right, cool. So if this is all you guys need, if for example, you just need a search ahead in your header or elsewhere in your site, then we're pretty much integrated. And you can tell it what to do through an event handler, such as this right here. We can add a little event handler to the query event. And in this case, I have one line of code that uh, opens up and redirects us to lucidworks.com uh, with the search query. Uh, your case might be a little different. Maybe you want to communicate with one of your existing components uh, or open a window uh, or a different page on your site. Um, either way, you would do it like this. Uh, in our case, we're going to continue and add more search components, so we don't need any JavaScript at all. Let's get rid of that, and let's move on. Uh, all right, so... We have the search ahead. Let's add a few more components to build this out. Let's add breadcrumbs, which you'll see in a minute. Let's add results here. And a cool quick gut check right here. Let's make sure it works. All right, and it works. Awesome. And we saw our breadcrumbs and the results updated. So let's keep going. Let's add facets as well. 
Sweet. And they're stacked up on top of each other because of the way HTML works. So by default, so we'll add a little bit of styling here to help that. Okay, cool. We are, we're just gonna use a, a grid right here and display them side by side, uh, these guys right here. All right, so at this point, we have, I mean, my, we have a full working search app with just a, a few search components. They're cohesive. Uh, they work together, meaning, uh, as you noticed, I added them and we didn't have to add any additional configuration. We don't have to wire them up or tell them how to behave. Uh, they simply understand each other. So if I search, I can see the search results get updated, the facets get updated. I have a breadcrumb and life is pretty good. Um, all right. And so at this point, we want to start customizing. I noticed that we have a few too many results for our liking by default here in the search ahead. Uh, it's 20, or around 20 or something like that. We we want five. So let's look at the configuration. Every single component has a configuration on it and you access it through the config property. And the exact properties are unique uh, on every component and listed in the documentation. In this case, I am going to use the limit property and I'm going to specify it as five, meaning that at most I will have five suggestions shown to me. Awesome. And in addition to that, I want to move on and add images as well. Right now we just have icons. It'd be much cooler if we also had images. So I'm going to add a field list property with uh, two fields in there, the title field and the thumbnail image field. And now we can see as we enter... Uh, as we enter some text, we have our five results with images. Awesome. And uh, that gives you a little bit of a glimpse as to the properties on search ahead. Let's move on and do something similar for the rest of the components. Uh, for facets, I want to show some different facets. I actually have a solution facet in the system, and I want to get rid of some of these because they're not... Uh, they're not relevant to my use case. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to add a configuration as well. I am going to paste this. So uh, just to save some time, and this is the configuration I pasted. Uh, it says that we want to include these two facets uh, using the facet property and that we want to rename them to category and solution. Awesome. And likewise, to move on, we want to update our results component and we want to we just want to do one thing. We want to add images here. Uh, and so I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to add a configuration with a field list. And in this case, I have four fields specified because I want four fields here. I want the title, the description, the URL, and the image. And we do see the image popped up. By default, we just get the three fields. Uh, and if we don't want one of those, we could just remove them here, like say the description, and then the description's gone. Well, in our case, we want it, so I'll add it back. Okay, great. So we now have a full working search app that is slightly customized to our use case. Let's move on to styling. So for styling, uh, of course, you can just use raw CSS and start inspecting and styling things, though we don't officially recommend or support that uh, methods as it's, as it's hard to maintain. Instead, uh, we support, uh, we promise to support and support uh, what we call CSS variables or what are called CSS variables. And so let's look at a few of those. Uh, what we're going to accomplish first is we're going to hide the title here because it's just not relevant to us. We don't want to show facets. Uh, we just don't want it there. And we're also going to remove the border because, you know, our designer doesn't like borders. And so we're going to we're going to enter this under the uh, LW facets tag and what I'm going to do is use a couple properties. I'm going to use the facets title display and the border width. So we're going to do the facets title display none and we should see that this up oh, disappears, it's gone and we're going to do the facets border width and just set that to 0 so this guy's gone up. Cool. 
And there we go. We've tidied up our facets a little bit. I'm going to do something similar to results, although I'm going to paste this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also remove the borders and the title. But most importantly, I'm going to make the image a little bit bigger. And cool. So I pasted a few additional properties to, to spare myself from having to type them. And as you can see, the image is bigger. The border and title is gone. And at this point, this is starting to look a little bit uh, like the site we want. All right. So let's, uh, oh, and we got this facet here. Let's, uh, let's look at this. Uh, let's look at this breadcrumb and give it a, a tiny bit of love as well. On this isn't any anything special. We're just going to give it a padding. But then we're also going to uh, remove the category here. So instead of seeing that, oh, there we go. Uh, so instead of seeing the category, we just have these uh, plain chips. That looks a little cleaner for us. Okay, uh, great. So let's recap real quick uh, before we wrap up. And uh, I will make this live for everyone to take example from. So once uh, once we've added our script tag, we went ahead and added a couple of components. We demonstrated how the search ahead could be used alone with nothing. And then we went on and added additional components to demonstrate how we could build out more of an entire search app experience in our apps. We added customization, a little bit of configuration to each component, and we dove into the world of CSS variables and styling. Cool. So at this point, you guys have a working search app, or we have a working search app. It's in our site. It's integrated. And for now, that's it for this demo. Thank you.